What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video, and today we are doing round two of two of this mock draft 2.1 with trades. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Check out round one first. We're going to do a quick recap right now, so we'll do that, but we are on the way. Ugh, we are on the road on the way to 10K. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. Let's get right into this, starting out with the recap y'all can read. This is for more so y'all's reference. So you also get to see some of the trades that did happen, including Kayla Williams being traded up for by the Bears, hence why the Bears do not have their second round pick. But Bears fans should be quite uh, understanding of the fact that they don't have a second round pick because of Chase Claypool. But we're going to continue re-evaluating what happened in there. We're going to continue uh, flashing back. So feel free to just stick around, let's have some fun. Pick number 33 with the Cardinals, Marvin Harrison Jr., Kool-Aid McKinstry. It's a damn good start. And I think defensive interior is the next way to go. You got Mason Smith here. We need something on the defensive interior. Uh, Tyleek Williams is another really awesome bet. But Mason Smith has just a little bit more versatility to him. He's 6'6", 300 pounds. And, you know, it's just a unique style of prospect that might be fun to work with. So I'm going to take a shot on somebody who I have yet to fully evaluate, but Mason Smith, certainly one of the more intriguing prospects in the 2024 NFL draft. Pick number 34. So we ended up grabbing Dallas Turner in the first with the Texans. Now a good idea maybe would be to get a little bit more receiving help. Looking at the guys available, I love Troy Franklin. I want to continue developing Nico Collins as more the X build receiver, uh, Troy Franklin could be a really nice number two. And then you could have Tank Dell be that gadget guy um, in the slot. So I'm going to go Troy Franklin here because he is one of the next best guys on my list. Looking who, uh, looking over who is still available in my top 32. Um, we've so far cleared house up until the linebackers here, Tommy Eichberg, Jeremiah Trotter, Bo Nix, Denzel Burke. So we have a quick run right there in my beginning of my 20s, as well as Tyler Perrin Quinn Ewers. So there are certainly some dudes here that should be taken somewhat soon. But regardless, at pick number 35, I'm certainly in the mood for an edge rusher here. And Chop Robinson could be a really nice addition because of the fact that this team's used to taking lower weight edge rushers. Brian Burns might be gone. Um, pretty sure. Did he end up getting his contract? I know he's reported in. But regardless, they still need an edge number two. And regardless of whether it's that pressing of an issue or not, getting edge number two is kind of key here. So Chop Robinson is going to be the guy. A lot of people have been saying how low I am on Chop, which again, super inconsistent. But this year he's looked a lot more consistent. I love giving guys second, third, fourth, fifth chances to continue proving themselves over the year and over the off season because again, I don't care about being right initially. The only thing I care about is being honest with y'all about what I see. I'm not going to be this guy who is going to take Hail Marys on players that you just don't see it and say, oh, well, he has some pretty good movement skills. So I'm going to just, you know, throw him up there and project that he's going to do better because that's not evaluating football. Evaluating football is saying, hey, this is the player they are. This is what they need to improve. Let's see if they improve. And that's exactly my style. So I know it could seem like I'm a bit of a pain in the ass for some of these players, but I promise you it's based in my love for the game and being 100% honest. At pick number 36, we got the defensive interior on lock. We have our corner. We have our wide receiver. Let's look at the offensive line. And someone who I absolutely adore is Troy Fautanu as a guard. He's been playing pretty much exclusively left tackle, but honestly, he has the length that is more so suited for a guard. And having Paris Johnson, Troy Fautanu, two really solid athletes paired next to each other for the future is just making my heart melt. Big fan of that potential right there. Troy Fautanu uh, staying on that West Coast territory, even though technically it's not on the West Coast. You guys know what I mean. In that like Pac-12 range, even though Pac-12 doesn't exist, kind of does, but y'all know what I mean. Pick number 37 for the Colts went after Kaitlin King in the first. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about going after an edge rusher, and JT Tumalau would be a pretty intriguing one. Just had a 33% pass rush win rate against Western Kentucky. Again, 
Good players should play very well against poor teams, but they should not be rewarded and boosted up the board because they did something they should have done. So I am waiting for Ohio State to play somebody legitimate before I look at him and Jack Sawyer. Princely looks awesome. I think this guy could certainly be a target for me this round. Um, so got to keep that open. And But I'm not a huge fan of EJ Speed, even though he's still, he's actually a massive contributor to the squad. I think going after a linebacker would not be a bad choice here. Still could invest in the secondary with another corner like Dwight McLaughlin or even Jason Marshall, but I doubt they go corner corner after getting corner in the second round last year. So um, I, I like Barrett Carter. He's a little bit light for me. Same thing with Jeremiah Trotter. Both of them are around six foot, six one, two hundred thirty pounds. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, he's built a little bit better, and I think his processor is a little bit better. I think he's better in coverage as well. We're going to be going Tommy Eichenberg at that pick. So continuing to just develop good players. We're just trying to make sure the defense is competent. Pick number thirty-eight for the Raiders. So we got defensive interior in a trade back. And we honestly might be trading back up into the end of this round. So feel free for those Raiders fans who just want to see the Raiders pick to go and continue to um, check towards the end of the video to see if I trade up with y'all. But we got the defensive interior. I think linebacker is a great choice at this point. That right tackle spot, still very sketch, but I don't have any right tackles for y'all. I just don't. Uh, cornerback could be a really good one. Dwight McLaughlin as well. But uh, I kind of just want to address the issue with Barrett Carter. Just the value is so good. At pick number 39, I'm debating going Bo Nix here, especially like where where did y'all pick? At 21, y'all actually made a pretty good run. So again, this is assuming the season ended up panning out this way. Uh, Bo Nix is kind of like my primary target at the moment because he is the next best player on the board. I don't think they go after defensive line because they did that in rounds one and two last year. So I do believe why a uh, quarterback is the right move. <sighs> It's tough, though, because, again, you do have uh, Derek Carr on a contract. You could look at some future safety options as well. So Kalen Bullock's still on the board. He'd be a really good addition to this team. You can't go wrong. Jaden Hicks is a monster, too, out of Wazoo. Uh, you could even get Jason Marshall and say, hey, if you don't work as a corner, we'll put you to safety. Uh, I'm going to go Kalen Bullock. We will start make, getting a little bit more youth in that safety core. Just naturally, it's the right thing to do. At pick number 40 for the Bears, we have Caleb Williams as well as Jared Verse. So this is our other pick that we acquired through a trade back with the Giants. Now, at this selection, I'm debating going wide receiver. And there's some good ones on the board. But the thing is, I'd rather wait to like maybe the third round to go after another one or to go after a wide receiver just because it's a very deep class. Uh, running back you have on lock, you could try to address the interior of the offensive line here. And I do like Donovan Jackson, Cedric Van Pran, Zach Zinter, like all really, really good choices. Cooper Beebe might be the one that intrigues me the most because I think he could just be a really consistent, solid option for y'all. Uh, Jonah Monheim as well. I'm surprised he's not listed here. So I think I just, I got to see where I have Jonah Monheim on here. Uh, okay, so technically I lied. Jonah Monheim, so I put up on Twitter so y'all can follow me there. Links are in the description below. Uh, that David Van or David, I keep calling him David. It's my bad. David Van is um, my number five player that wasn't on the list, but it's actually Jonah Monheim, who's been playing left tackle up to 300 pounds. I'm honestly going to, I'm going to debate selecting Jonah Monheim at this spot. And he's going to be the guard, but he has left tackle versatility and right tackle versatility. So you can step in for injury as well. Uh, I'm not a fan of Bryce Foster, so that's going to be the placeholder, but this is going to be the left tackle for Caleb Williams right now in Jonah Monheim, who I do still think should be moving to guard. Pick number 41 for the Patriots. Uh, we could just get a QB in here. I mean, because the value is so good. Look at the J.J. McCarthy, Quinn Ewers, Bo Nix, all should be worth first-round picks. K.J. Jefferson making an argument. Sam Hartman, amazing value. Like This is a stat class. This is one of those classes I'm kind of excited to see who returns. Like. I don't think Quinn's going to return just because of the fact that you have Arch Manning like right on your ass. But I mean, I could totally see um, JJ McCarthy saying, dude, I'm going to be like a top five pick in the next year's draft. I don't need to come out in this one. Uh, I don't really see many other quarterbacks that haven't used up the majority of their time. So there's a lot of really good choices here, like a lot of really good choices. 
But Patriots, we took a tackle in Joe Alt in round number one. Double checking on that right now. And yep, we got Joe Alt in round number one, which is excelente. Love that. Now, other picks, I don't think they need to address the defense at this point. They've done that pretty damn well with Christian Gonzalez as well as Keon White. So looking at the other guys who are available, I want to check out the guards and tackles who are still available. You got Cooper Beebe here. I don't think you need to address interior. Uh, it really is just going to be a left and right tackle situation. We've kind of exhausted most of those resources. So it's wide receiver or QB for me, maybe tight end in here. To be fair, I do like Jatavian Sanders, and he could be a good addition to this team. Kind of be what Johnu Smith was supposed to be. And we're seeing such a high usage from Hunter Henry that they are starting to value this position more. So we're going to go Jatavian Sanders here out of Texas, going before his beloved quarterback. But at pick number 42, the commanders could just end up taking a freaking quarterback at this point. Like, this is the tough thing. You have to have a landing spot for a QB. And a lot of these teams might just say we're passing on y'all. They might. And it wouldn't be an awful decision either. I don't think linebackers out of the question with Jeremiah Trotter here. Did I take Barrett Carter earlier? Honestly, to be fair, it doesn't matter. Um, both of them are going to be excellent upgrades for the Raiders. So, you know, pick your poison because whatever team's going to take the other would be pretty happy. Uh, I very well might do this for Washington. Flip them. It's Barrett Carter, Jeremiah Trotter. Do whichever way that y'all please because uh, I really don't think that their skill sets are too far apart. I think Barrett Carter is a little more athletic and Jeremiah Trotter is just a little bit more better of a processor. But regardless, both are upgrades to both teams. And uh, just going to continue making those defenses better. Pick number 43 for the Rams. We haven't seen many trades, but again, not many teams that need to trade up. Uh, we still have some star quarterbacks on the board. Still have some good receivers here. Still got the top tier running backs. And I have some, there are some good running backs in this class. Uh, I've been digging through them and that running back video should be coming out within the next week or so. So Rams, we ended up getting Jerzon Johnny Newton. And again, we've already exhausted most of the offensive line. I do think going after a linebacker or a secondary selection would not be a bad choice, but I'm actually going to go after my man, Tyler Barron to pair up with his former teammate. Yes, they drafted his other buddy out of Tennessee in the third round of Byron Young last year. So we're going to be getting his buddy, Tyler Barron at this point. Um, I don't know enough about Nelson Caesar, so. We're going to use another UH player as a placeholder, but Tyler Barron, Tennessee, the selection. Pick number 44. They could have honestly sat here and got Bo Nix, but instead they got Drake May. Sorry, Bucks fans. Um, it is what it is. I didn't think that Bo Nix was going to be here. I do all this live, so there you go. Um, but this selection, I think you still could go an edge rusher. You could go a linebacker route as well. To be fair, the linebackers are not too bueno at the moment. This is a pretty thin linebacker class. So you could see wide receiver being a potential need for this team because of the fact that you potentially could lose Mike Evans eventually. But I'd honestly just wait for someone like Boo McCoy. I really would. Like, just not much of a need at the moment for many of these guys. Uh, you got A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy still on the board, but... I don't really see much of a need here. You could go for the top running back on the board uh, in Trey Benson, or I'm not a huge fan of Travion Henderson, but Bucky Irving. And then more importantly, Rocket Raheem Sanders. He's awesome. And, you know, I might want somebody who's more shifty like Trey Benson and continue that train. But having somebody who's 242 who moves very similar to Trey could be the right move. Uh, I don't think Rashad White is necessarily a top tier back. And there's not really many other holes that I see on this team. Uh, let's check out the offensive line one more time. Man, Cooper Beebe's here. We'll go Cooper Beebe. I uh, just addressed the offensive line. Might as well do that. Pick number 45. So this is the Jets pick for the Packers. I mean, at a certain point, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. QB Bo Nix is going to be really good for a day one starter. Quinn Ewers, they like developing prospects. I'm going to go Quinn Ewers at the spot. I don't think they need a QB, but they don't need very much else. Just got to call it as it is. They don't need much else. Uh, 46, we have the Titans going Bo Nix because why, why not? 
why not? The quarterbacks are worth first round picks and you're getting them here in the second. You're not even having to trade up for them. So sponsor the show, by the way, Oli Pop. Feel free to use my code. All the codes are down in the little ticker below. But Bo Nix, he's better. He has a higher grade than I had on Will Levis and he operates the system very, very well. Pick number 47, we got Michael Penix in the first round. Now at this spot, they did just sign Dalton Reisner. So that's a good thing. I do think this will be where I have the first running back come off the board. Trey Benson is going to be great. Rocket Sanders is going to be great. Um, Marshawn Lloyd is a monster if he fixes his fumbling issue. I'm uh, 90% sure this guy's had five fumbles, but he did just transfer to USC and has only had one so far <laughs> only. But well, I just ended up choking on my own spit. There we go. Pause. Uh, we're going to be going... Oh, I think we're going to go after Rocket Sanders here. The red Rocket Sanders himself, 242 pounds, probably going to be running in the four fours, low four fours as well. I thought he was a 200 pound back. I never knew he was 240. The more I watched him, the more I fell in love. Really, really talented running back there out of Arkansas and can actually really help out this defense or this offense here by giving them a good tempo. Pick number 48 for the Steelers. What quarterbacks are still available? (laughs) JJ McCarthy. That'd be intriguing. That's a totally different style of quarterback than Kenny Pickett. But that'd be really intriguing. Like, would the Steelers take J.J. McCarthy at this point? I don't think so with um, Jason Marshall on the board. I'm going to go Jason because he fits what the Steelers defense has been running, and we do need secondary help. Um, Double checking that I did not take a DB earlier, and I took Taliese Fuwaga out of Oregon State for us. So Taliese Fuwaga, Jason Marshall, two top 40 players on my board. Oh, excuse me, number 42 on my board pick number 49 for the Seahawks moved up for Shadur Sanders and this is a team that doesn't really need much and is actually very much underperforming compared to where they should be playing but linebacker um Cedric Gray didn't look too great when I watched him Jalen Ford has been you know not really spectacular Tyron Hopper's the fun one because he's a blitzer I might go Tyron Hopper and see what the hell happens. Let's let's just test it out. Let's have some fun. I love Tyron Hopper. He is um, my seventh. Well, actually, no. He was going to be on my list of guys who did not make the PFF uh, top 150, but apparently he did. So that's awesome. Pick number 50. We took Quinn Ewers at pick number 45. And at this selection, uh, what did we already draft? We drafted Christian Haynes. Ooh. We need a DB. Tyler Nubin is or Nubin is perfect for the system. You know, just a big hitter, ball hawk. Just he fits. He fits. And he's from Minnesota. So going to Wisconsin. Pretty short, pretty short uh, little move right there. Pick number 51. So we ended up going after a QB, didn't we? Usually I do. Joe Milton. We got the big cannon now on the squad. I do think we could go Xavier Worthy to add a really nice deep threat here. I personally like Jacob Cowing as a slot and Jermaine Burton as a deep threat more, but I do think that Xavier Worthy will get a lot more hype. He ended up performing very well versus Alabama, and this is going to be a very nice deep threat option there for uh, the Falcons to continue using the pair up with the other weapons that they do have. Pick number 52 would have been a great pick for the Chargers, actually, Xavier Worthy, but uh, drafted defense interior earlier on now I think actually this is a good opportunity to go after someone like Trey Benson who is a top tier running back for sure uh the more I watched him even from this year he still looks spectacular I thought he took a step back the more I watched him it just looks like a step back and it actually isn't so good for him pick number 53 I want to check to see if there's anybody else from my top 32 still on the board I don't believe so oh we got Denzel Burke there uh, to be fair, Denzel Burke's had a lot of injury issues. He's been very inconsistent. I'm, I would not be too shocked if he is here. Um, but the Eagles draft another falling player. Cornerback is one of the positions I wanted to target for him. So, uh, it's just, it's an excellent pick. I think he could be a first round grade. He is, well, I mean, he's number 24 on my board. So there you go. At pick number 54 for the Browns. Um, I think, they just go JJ McCarthy and just say, screw it. We're going to have a massive QB competition with DTR. No, I do think Antoine Wells and juice Wells is a type of player that they would be intrigued with. Obviously losing, um, Nick Chubb, not great. That hurts. Nick Chubb actually was in most of my drafts, fantasy drafts, my number one selection. 
Uh, not number one overall, but my first round selection. So that hurts. That he's out for the year. But again, this is a team that doesn't need that much. I would look in the linebacker room. Junior Colson, not an awful option. Uh, defensive interior. Defense interior is probably going to be your best bang for your buck. So we're going to go Tyleek Williams here. I know that y'all have Siaki Ika in there and stuff, but Tyleek Williams has that pass rushing upside that I think would value make the team a lot more valuable. I know that this is a one with trades. I just haven't seen the value necessary for a trade up. Uh, we do still have J.J. McCarthy on the board. So a team looking to develop a QB could certainly be interested in moving up at this point. And um, what teams haven't drafted a QB? I guess we could talk about the Saints now making a move up because it's going to be cheaper. Uh, Raiders could make a move up because it's going to be much cheaper. I just don't really see many other teams that will want to pull the trigger necessarily. Like, you see any teams? I don't really see many teams. Uh, so I think JJ McCarthy might be a move up that we do later on for the Raiders or the Saints. It's probably going to be the Raiders. I don't know how much faith they have in Aiden O'Connell, but I like Aiden O'Connell. Pick number 55, we moved up from Mecca Abuka. It's a really good start. Now I think we're going to go after Zach Center or Cedric Van Pran, but I like the movement skills of Van Pran and the center versatility just a little bit more. Pick number 56 would have been a great pick for the Lions, but let's stay in Michigan. Zach Zinter, right guard, uh, going to the Leones. And um, yeah, I know that y'all got nabbed with that right there, but Johnny Wilson and Zach Zinter are a very nice one and two. Pick number 57. So I think tight end certainly should be a position y'all look at. Uh, you got Jaheim Bell here. And we did see Hayden Hurst perform pretty well. They have a similar uh, ability after the catch. So I'm going to test it out with the H-back Jaheim Bell. Pick number 58 for the Dolphinos. I think cornerback should be the position that they tried to target pretty heavily. Now you could stay near Florida and go to Bama, see DJ James in there because I really like DJ James. But um, Shaw Smith Wade, so glad to see him on here. Big fan of him. I think that... Uh, I'm going to go after Dwight McLaughlin, actually. I am. He's not listed in here, but he should be. Uh, because I love Shaw Smith-Wade, I'm going to use him as my placeholder. He's not going to be drafted in the second round, but uh, this is going to be Dwight McLaughlin, cornerback out of Arkansas. He's right here at number 41 overall. Pick number 59 for the Ravens. Honestly, Dwight McLaughlin wouldn't be a bad choice here, even though I already got a corner in the first for the Ravens. Um... I think that that would have been a good move for him. Again, first round pick was Kamari Lassiter. So at this selection, I would be intrigued with getting some extra pass rush upside from the defensive interior. Ruka Roro could be definitely that guy who I love to see. But running back, man, I mean, that just feels like a position they have yet to address. And they kind of need to. I really would like to see Bucky Irving on this squad. So that's what I'm going to do. Pick number 60. So Buffalo. Uh, wide receiver, not really the position that I see the most value in at the moment. They could try to bring on somebody like Juice Wells or J. Michael Sturdivant, who I'm a big fan of as well, to just come in and absolutely kick ass. You know, there's a lot of good players, a lot of good players in this class, especially in the receiving room. I would wait on that. Uh, I might just go after Edge and like look at JT Tumalau, Princely. I like Princely a lot. He's improved tremendously over the year. Um, in the offseason, so I'm going to go Princely Uman Milan because I don't know how much longer Floyd and Von Miller are going to be playing, and without, you know, having, excuse me, your safety net there with having Boogie Basham as depth, I really do want to see some extra goodies because I don't like seeing three edge rushers potentially leave a team within a 20 or a 12-month cycle. Pick number 61 for the Cowboys. We went after a uh, offensive lineman, I believe at the end of the first 90% sure we did that. Uh, Grant Barton, good selection. I'm going to back that selection. Linebackers not looking too bueno right now, but I do think going after a corner wouldn't be a bad selection. Nate Wiggins needs some coaching up, but he has all the talent in the world. It's going to be a great spot to take him. Pick number 62, the Eagles. They got Denzel Burke as well as Leatu Latu. Uh, quarterbacks are here. We're going to do the Howie thing and trade out of this spot. Now the question is, do we want the Raiders do we want the Broncos even to potentially move up into this spot? Um, Patriots are a 
like a dark horse team for it. I think the Jets could be a good option here. So the Jets, um, did they end up they ended up moving up? They ended up moving up for Amarius Mims. So they're gonna be aggressive as well. They're gonna just say screw. We're at 13 overall. Um, so we kind of need to just continue bolstering our core. And I think that they'll end up taking maybe a couple picks here and there. Feel free to negotiate that how you please. I'm not going to in the moment. I'm just having the Jets move up to select JJ McCarthy as their backup to and successor to Aaron Rodgers, who's a great quarterback. He should be potentially a first round pick, but you know, there's just so many picks you can have in the first round. Pick number 63 for the Niners. I might even just take JT Tumalau and develop him. Like, honestly, I know Drake Jackson's working out, but like, there's just a certain point where you say, screw it, we're going to develop you. And I might be at that point, but looking at the corners and safeties on the board, Javon Bullard could be a really fun one. Andrew Makuba, because he has that corner safety versatility, might be your best bang for your buck, though. And he doesn't need to perform right away. So that's why I'm going to go Andrew Makuba. And at pick number 64, are there any other QBs that could potentially slip in here? Yeah, you got KJ Jefferson, Jalen Daniels, Riley Leonard. Um, not super high on Riley Leonard. I don't think he has that great of an arm, but you know he's still a, a solid quarterback. Uh, we ended up going after a wide receiver in Malik Neighbors. This is a great spot to go defensive interior with Rook Aroharo, who hopefully can pair up with Chris Jones, even though he's a little bit lighter. He has a lot of versatility to him. So that is going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. See you on the far side.